Good morning. I want to talk now about the upcoming lunar month from April 8th through May 7th. So let's see if I can share my screen so we can get started. Let's see here. Okay. I just need to uh, get a few panels out of the way so that I can see what I'm doing. So just bear with me a second. One more to take care of. And here we go. The lunar month, April 8th through May 7th. Now, first, let me give you just a quick overview. This will be a very pivotal lunar month. It begins with a powerful solar eclipse on April 8th where the sun, moon, and Chiron will all be exactly conjunct at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. Consequently, some will be wounded, some will heal, and some will even transcend. In particular, America, the Middle East, Putin, members of the British royal family, and Pope Francis will all be impacted. And they will be covered by me in another PowerPoint presentation, on the lunar month for countries and people. Now, a conjunction between Mars and Saturn on April 10th could express itself as either frustration that leads to violence or as a restriction on violence. And this conjunction occurs in Pisces and neither planet is at its best there. An optimal outcome, though, would be a formulation of strategies and actions for peace. Then on April 20th, uh, a conjunction in Taurus of Jupiter and Uranus could stir both technological breakthroughs and rebellion. Also, on April 20th, there will be a Chiron return in the USA chart. And we're going to have two Chiron returns this year, one on April 20th, one uh, just a few days after the presidential election in November, and then a third one in early 2025. I'll say more about that in my video on Lunar Month and how it affects countries and people. And lastly, a semi-square between Saturn and Pluto could raise tensions in the latter part of April and the first half of May. Okay, now here is just a... Uh, a type of bar graph which shows uh, transits between uh, planets, not all the planets, but uh, from Mars on out uh, for this lunar month. And you can see when certain of these transits will be exact. On the 10th, that's when Mars will be uh, conjunct Saturn, just a couple of days after <clears throat> the start of the lunar month. On the 13th, we have Mars making a semi-square to Pluto that could raise some tensions. And then on the 20th, we have that <clears throat> conjunction <clears throat> between uh, Jupiter and Uranus. I'm going to take a little sip of tea, clear my throat. <clears> throat> So you can see this conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus. It's in effect from uh, about middle of April, almost to the very end of April, I'd say till the, <clears throat> until the last week of April. On the 19th, Mars will make a sextile to both Jupiter and Uranus. Uh, so we could get some good things uh, happening on that day maybe some more scientific innovations or um, good news for the economy and the stock market. However, as we uh, approach the end of the lunar month, um, Saturn making a semi-square to Pluto, that is going to start increasing in strength and that lasts a little bit past mid-May and it will be exact on May 6th right before uh, the next 
new moon, the beginning of the next lunar month. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with this monster of a solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. We'll have Sun, Moon, and Chiron exactly conjunct at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. And as I say, that'll leave a mark. Uh, also, I understand <clears throat> that this is a super moon, which may increase its impact intensity. Uh, this will be a total eclipse. I've heard that this is going to be a little longer than most uh, solar eclipses. And astrologically, that means its impact is going to last longer. Also, there is a comet that may be visible during the solar eclipse. Uh, actually close to or in conjunction with uh, Sun, Moon, and Mercury. The uh, sort of folklore name for the comet is uh, the Devil Comet because it looks like it has a couple of horns. Some say it looks like the Millennia Falcon from uh, Star Wars. So uh, this looks like it'll be a very powerful eclipse. And additionally, if you're in that zone, that those parts of America where you will be able to witness the eclipse, you should be all able to see all seven of the visible planets from Sun uh, through Saturn. So the nature of Aries is it can be assertion, aggression, individuality, independence. It could be very warlike, or it could be a recognition of your uh, individual spirit, of going your own way on things. Uh, Chiron, it's often associated with wounding, which then has to be followed by healing, but what it really wants to do is help you transcend. It resides between Saturn and Uranus, sometimes inside the orbit of Saturn, sometimes outside the orbit of Uranus, and it forms a bridge between the visible and the invisible planets. It's that urge within us that wants us to go beyond what we can see, but to do that, it often has to crack our hard Saturnian shells, and as I say, you can't crack, make... <laughs> Well, I usually say it better than that. You can't make a cosmic omelet without cracking a few cosmic eggs. So in the process of helping us transcend, uh, sometimes we need to be cracked open first, and that's where the wounding uh, tends to come from. So for people who have significant, important planets around 19 degrees of either Aries Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, the cardinal signs, uh, you will be impacted in one way or another by this eclipse. And it turns out there's a lot of countries, a lot of important people around the world who will be impacted in such a way. And that's what I'll talk about in my follow-up video on the lunar month for uh, countries and people. Okay, now to add fuel to the fire, we have, uh, let's see, Mars in a pretty strong uh, conjunction uh, with Saturn. And it's in Pisces, where neither planet does all that well. Uh, Saturn wants things to be concrete. Mars wants action. But Pisces and its ruler Neptune, they, they dissolve the boundaries. They... Uh, obscure the edges of things so it's hard to put things into action but this is a good time for making concrete plans for future actions now the worst that could happen here is mars wants to be assertive and aggressive uh, saturn wants to restrict that saturn's all about restriction and regulation and if Mars gets restricted or frustrated too much, then you could have the sudden bursts of violence. On the other hand, 
uh, Saturn may be able to restrict the aggressive tendencies or regulate the aggressive tendencies, let's say, of Mars uh, without uh, such frustration or explosions of violence occurring. So for example, uh, this could signal a time in which uh, uh, a ceasefire in the Middle East is put together and negotiations maybe uh, take precedence over uh, violent action. Just one possibility. We'll have to wait and see what exactly happens. Now, at the same time, we have Jupiter approaching that exact conjunction with Uranus. <clears throat> and that can manifest as either a technological innovation. Of course, Pluto having moved into Aquarius, that's going to bring about a long 20-year uh, period in which we see a new, a lot of new technologies coming into being. Uh, Jupiter conjunct Uranus, that doesn't last as long, but this is uh, like a, a point of in emphasis, a punctuation point on the innovation of Pluto and Aquarius. And with the two of these, uh, we've already seen just a lot of rapid development recently in artificial intelligence. And also, uh, we're hearing that within 10 years, uh, nuclear fusion uh, may be made commercial, and that will give us a lot of uh, free or inexpensive uh, energy. Uh, nuclear fusion will create more uh, energy than it uses. Okay. Now, these technological growth advancement, that's perhaps the good side of this conjunction. But the downside is, remember, Uranus also rules a rebellion, revolution. It wants to break up the pattern of things. And so we often see more uh, wars, skirmishes, and rebellions taking place uh, during conjunctions of Jupiter and Uranus. Of course, with Pluto and Aquarius, that is moving power from individuals to groups, either groups of countries or groups of people. So these two things, again, kind of work hand in hand uh, toward the same result. Now, if we look at uh, past conjunctions of uh, Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus, they were last conjunct there in 1941. And uh, the world was at war at that time. This was World War I. But this was also the time that was a year in which the Manhattan Project began, uh, which led to the development of the atomic bomb. And throughout the war, uh, we saw a lot of other uh, uh, breakthroughs and technical, technological achievements and uh, aviation and other areas being made as part of the support uh, for the war effort. Okay. And you might notice the good thing here is that this Mars-Saturn conjunction is making a fairly nice sextile uh, to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So these things are going to work <clears throat> hand in hand. And let's see. <clears throat> At its best, it's going to be, uh, you know, a fired up imagination <laughs> over here with uh Mars and Pisces firing things up, Saturn and Pisces making plans, working out details. And then for now, that leads to the aha moments over here. Uh, the expansion in technology, which will also help the economy since uh, this is in, uh, these plants are in Taurus. Okay, now, Let's see, what else do we have? 
these things working hand in hand. We also have Pluto making a sextile to Neptune and Venus. It looks like we have a Neptune and Venus conjunction here. It's, it's waning because Venus is moving on. But Neptune, uh, again, it's what's going on in our imagination here. Venus has cross signs. It has moved into Aries. And in Aries, whatever Neptune is imagining, Venus can help bring it into manifestation. Now, Venus, it's the classic pl pleasure principle. Uh, the drive to reduce tension. And as such, Venus, uh, it takes our experiences of the world in this pursuit of pleasure it takes what we experience in the world and classifies it as either good or bad. And this leads to a sense of what we value. But this is all done in a nonverbal manner. So Venus is also connected with our right brain, our nonverbal brain. It just represents what feels good to us, what doesn't feel good, what feels right, what doesn't feel right, what we value, what we don't value. Uh, but the things we've been imagining, Venus and Aries will try and bring those into manifestation. And Pluto and Aquarius is going to lend uh, support and power from groups to help bring this about. Now, let's see what we also have here. We have Sun, Moon, Chiron, Semisextal, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, Uranus. In other words, the Sun-Moon Chiron conjunction at the solar eclipse, it's about midway in between uh, the Mars-Saturn conjunction and the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. It's going to be the focal point for all of that. And in fact, Chiron in particular is going to be a focal point for the entire month. Chiron and Aries. So... A lot of focus, given uh, current circumstances, a lot of the focus in this month may be on various wars and conflicts around the world. Uh, and those who approach these things at a higher level will be working on trying to heal these conflicts, uh, see what we can do to heal these conflicts. At a lower level, it could just manifest as more wounding uh, throughout the month. On a personal level, uh, there are going to be people who intuit, feel, and respond to this call for individual spirituality. Chiron and Aries is, remember, Chiron is this urge to transcend. Aries is the individual. This can be individual spirituality. And so there are some who are going to feel this very sweet spiritual energy coming into their lives or into their meditations. And this can help transform the world for good. So while there will be a focus perhaps on conflict in this lunar month, we should tilt that focus toward healing the conflicts, healing the wounded, healing the people, and trying to arrive at a higher spiritual state. And that is what this eclipse will do for us in the long run. Uh, it may be disruptive at first, but it's bringing a higher spiritual energy into the world that more and more people will become aware of. And this will help transform the world, hopefully, into something more beautiful. But that is where the focus is going to be for this entire month. And by the way, uh, in late fall of this year, I think it's around November, December, and then January, February of next year, Chiron is going to be moving retrograde. It's going to move back over this eclipse point several times. I think about three times, and that is going to be reactivating uh, the energies of this eclipse. So 
whatever is initiated around this time, those energies are going to be revisited in the uh, late fall of 2024 and the first couple of months of 2025. Okay, let's move on. Now, in the period between the uh, new moon, the solar eclipse, and the first quarter moon, these are going to be the aspects that occur. And you can see here, Sun exactly conjunct Chiron on April the 8th. I don't have the moon in here because that would be too much. But you can get some exact dates. For instance, on the 9th, Venus will making uh, a semi-square to Uranus that creates a little nervous tension in people. On the 10th, that is when the Mars-Saturn conjunction uh, becomes exact. Uh, there will be a Mercury-Sun uh, conjunction on the 11th. And on the 13th, we have Mars making a semi-square to Pluto. That is going to increase tensions uh, and make things a little bit more volatile. Oh, let me go back, mention one thing. On top of everything that's going on, uh, it's hard to see it because I've got covered up here, but this is Mercury, and this is a little symbol for retrograde that the red line's going over. Mercury will have turned retrograde on April 1st. Okay, so, uh, that typically causes some snafus in communication. Uh, thought is turned inward rather than outward. And it makes negotiations for things a little bit more difficult. It makes uh, going inside yourself, thinking about things, working out plans for later a little easier. But there can be all sorts of communication problems. Uh, of all sorts uh, during this uh, period that uh, Mercury is retrograde. Okay, now let's go on to the first quarter moon. Uh, let me remind you or tell you for the first time that uh, in ancient Babylonia, uh, the new moon, the quarter moons, and the full moon were considered as both evil days and holy days. Uh, they were holy days if you refrain from all sorts of various actions, evil days if you tried to pursue those actions. Modern science or modern statistical studies that show that all kinds of tensions, uh, mortality and sleep disturbances can occur at one or another of these phases of the moon. So uh, these are the, the days of tension, the days when uh, things might break one way or another. So in looking at the lunar month, I think a good way to uh, tear it apart is to look at that new moon, first quarter, full moon, and third quarter moons. So let's see, when we get to the first quarter moon, Mercury, is in a pretty good conjunction uh, with Chiron. Okay, it has, uh, it looks like it has just occurred. And let me go back to my previous slide. Uh, I don't see the Mercury Chiron here. It's, it's just happened on the 15th that's happened after the last day in that table. So sometime just very, very shortly before this first quarter moon, we'll have Mercury exactly conjunct Chiron. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have Mercury conjunct Chiron, later we're gonna have Venus conjunct Chiron. We're getting aftershocks, aftershocks of that uh, eclipse. Every time we get something, of conjuncting or stimulating Chiron, it's bringing to the forefront some of that same energy that was present 
uh, at the April 8th uh, solar eclipse. Okay, so we got that. We have Jupiter still uh, in a strong conjunction with Uranus. It's getting closer and closer to that. It'll be exact on the 20th. Uh, Mars had its exact conjunction with Saturn on the 10th. It's still with an orb, but that influence is waning now. Uh, we still have Jupiter, Uranus, sextal Mars, Saturn. So these two conjunctions are still working together in a good way. And hopefully this will help bring about creative solutions for peace and other problems. Remember Saturn and Mars, they're still in Neptune, which likes to dissolve the boundaries between things, and that softens the edges of any conflict. So this is a good time and for uh, working on concrete plans to curb aggression. It's not a good time for going to war because things will be unclear, things will be muddled as a result of the influence of Pisces. There will be confusion, mistakes will be made. Okay, what else do we have? We have Mercury, that Mercury-Chiron conjunction is semi-sextal, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, Uranus. So Chiron is still at the center of everything. Chiron and Aries, that's still the pivot point as it will tend to be for the entire month. And lastly, we have Mars making a semi-square to Pluto. Unfortunately, that can uh, increase some tensions. Okay, now the moon is also making some aspects, including the square to this Mars Chiron, but also uh, trying to Neptune and a sextile to Jupiter, Uranus, I'm not talking about the moon so much because it's it moves on pretty quickly. It does create sort of a point of uh, emphasis at the time of exactness of moon, uh, sun square moon. Uh, but then the influence uh, pretty much fades. Okay, but these the trine and the sextal, they're going to help things out a little bit. Now, in the week between the first quarter moon and the full moon, we've got a lot more aspects between planets. So there's going to be a lot more action of uh, some sort or another at this time. And here you can see on the 15th at 8.23 a.m. in Scottsdale, Arizona, where I am, that's when Mercury is going to be exactly conjunct Chiron. We have Venus conjunct the lunar nodal axis on April 17th. That intensifies feelings about things. Uh, Mercury conjunct Venus on the 19th. That'll be pleasant. Oh, also on the 19th, the sun is going to move from Aries into Taurus. So that is shifting some of the emphasis from assertiveness or aggression, individuality, to maintaining and building some uh, wealth and focusing on our values and uh, not just wealth, but the things we need to survive. Also on the 19th, Mars is gonna make an exact sextile to both Jupiter and Uranus. And that is going to be beneficial. That helps release some of this tension and fuel it more into innovation, hopefully. Now, if you're dead set on rebellion and conflict, this would unfortunately could also make it easier to fight. Uh, but since a sextile uh, doesn't have a lot of tension in it, hopefully this will help reduce tension and produce good things. Uh, sun will make a semi-square to Saturn on the 19th too, and that is going to elevate intentions, cause some feelings of restriction among some people. And then the next day, the 20th, that is when we have Jupiter conjunct Chiron. 
I'm sorry, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. And on that very same day in America, and all the various July 1776 charts that people might use for America, uh, transiting Chiron will be conjunct natal Chiron in those charts. That's the same day that we have the Chi this first Chiron return for America. And uh, that often manifests in terms of political wounding for the country. We went through this kind of Chiron return in the early 70s. We went through the political wounding of Watergate with President Nixon. And now it's the political wounding of the January 6th insurrection and Donald Trump. Okay, on the next day, Venus will be exactly conjunct Chiron. So again, we get some aftershocks from that April 8th uh, eclipse. Uh, that is the emphasis. That's the pivot point for the entire month, Chiron and Aries. Also on the 21st, the sun will make an exact square to Pluto. And that is going to make things a little tense. This is going to be a conflict between uh, individuals and the powers that be, the groups uh, that hold power now that Pluto is in Aquarius. All right. Now, if we go on to the full moon, okay, maybe the most important aspect here is we have Pluto making a very strong square to both the sun and the moon. There is this T square. So at this point, there is also going to be quite a focus on uh, whatever groups the power now resides with. This can be both alliances of nations, and it can be groups of protesters uh, in countries, uh, people demanding this or that. So this might be a day of protest of some sort or another, but this is going to make this uh, uh, in some ways a rather tense uh, full moon uh, to experience here. Now, let's see, what else do we have? Well, we ha still have Jupiter conjunct Mar Uranus, but now Mars, instead of being conjunct with Saturn, it's now moved on uh, to being conjunct uh, with Neptune. And in terms of Mars wanting to take definite action, this is really confusing it. <laughs> it's almost like not knowing which way to turn. As I say, this can also be a great time for visualizing future actions, imagining uh, what kind of actions you should take in the future once Mars moves on into Aries. So rather than this being confusion, not knowing which way to turn, think of it as also examining all possibilities. Uh, every negative aspect <clears throat> always has <clears throat> a beneficial way <clears throat> it can manifest. Let me get some more tea. <clears throat> yeah, every hard aspect has a, a good way in which it could manifest. And, and likewise, every good aspect could work out uh, possibly in some bad ways. So we need to use our imagination to ve develop good plans of actions for the future. Okay, Saturn is making a semi-square to Pluto. Pluto has power, Saturn is restriction, and <clears throat> the semi-square creates uh, some tension uh, between these two. So, it may be a, a curbing of power here, or it may be frustration, which re results in an unleashing of power that we would rather prefer is not unleashed. 
We also have Chiron conjunct Mercury, Venus, and the lunar nodal axis. All of these are in orb. None of them are conjunct, or exact, rather. But again, <clears throat> more aftershocks from the April 8th solar eclipse. More emphasis on Chiron uh, going on. And the big question with Chiron and Aries is, are we going to pursue more wounding and taking revenge for this and that? <clears throat> or will we uh, focus on healing? <clears throat> or will we experience some of those more transcendent energies of Chiron? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Let me just have some more tea. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> our, <clears throat> some of our semi-sextals are breaking up again, but we, <clears throat> we still have a little bit going on. <clears throat> we have uh, Chiron Venus making a semi-sextal uh, to Jupiter Uranus and also to Mars, Neptune, and Chiron, Venus are also with, actually within orb of a semi-sextal to Saturn again. So once again, uh, Chiron is at the center of everything. And we still have Jupiter, Uranus uh, making a sextal to, let's see, I said, um, Mars and Saturn here, well, some of this is still within orb of a sextal to, to Saturn, but also within orb of a sextal to Neptune. So I should have Neptune down here too. Sorry about that. It's really interesting. On the one hand, uh, some of the patterns we had earlier, they're breaking up a bit, but at the same time, they're including within orb a few more planets. So roughly speaking, stuff over here, Jupiter, Uranus, it's coordinating well with stuff over here. Saturn, Mars, and Neptune, you know, this is all uh, imaginative plans. This is uh, creativity, growth. So negotiators, people who talk, there, if they can come up with some good plans here, and then uh, Chiron, Venus here, and Aries, this is the implementation. It's the focal point uh, for all that activity. All right, in the week from the full moon to the third quarter moon, uh, these are the main transits that occur, and on the 25th, a uh, couple of days after that full moon, Mercury is going to turn stationary direct. So whatever uh, thoughts or plans that have been in the works from uh, the 1st through the 25th, well, now they can start being uh, implemented, start being expressed. And so the ground that we go over from... Uh, uh, April 1st, when uh, Mar Mercury turns retrograde through April 25th, that ground will be revisited, but now plans can be uh, expressed outwardly. We're going to have Mars exactly conjunct Neptune on the 28th. On the 29th, Venus moves into Taurus, where it does well, uh, since it rules Taurus. So this might be good for peace, for the economy, for things we enjoy doing. On the 30th, Mars goes into Aries. And the question is, is this going to lead to more violence, more aggression? Or will it be an implementation of the plans for peace that uh, Mars may have been formulating while it was in Pisces? Uh, in conjunction first with Saturn and then later with Neptune. <clears throat> also on the 
30th, uh, a couple of things are going to cause tension. Venus will be making a semi-square uh, to Saturn and an exact square to Pluto. So our right brain, the things we like, the things we enjoy, there will be uh, some kind of uh, restrictions or blockages that we encounter uh, in, in our pursuit for pleasure <clears throat> and perhaps our pursuit, pursuit for peace. <coughs> and this brings us to the third quarter moon. At this time, uh, let's see. I've got Saturn's semi-square, Pluto square, Venus. Let's look at what actually is going on here. Saturn is making a semi-square to Pluto. That's rather tense. Semi-squares are like uh, either turning points or breaking points. They're not as tense as a square, but they're, they're uh, moments in time when things can change direction. So... Uh, Saturn semi-square Pluto is a little tense. Pluto is going to be square Venus, uh, which is going to interfere with our pursuit of peace and pleasure. But then Venus is also making a semi-square uh, to Saturn. So there is some tension between what Venus wants to pursue, what we think is good, and perhaps regulation that has to occur or some sort of restriction on that. Now, these three planets, Venus, Saturn, and Pluto, they're creating a triangle, but it's a rather tense triangle where we have a square on one side and the other two sides are semi-squares. And Saturn, whoops, sorry for that. Saturn is going to be the focal point here. Uh, so, Whatever Venus wants to do in its pursuit of pleasure, whatever Pluto wants to do in its expression of power, uh, group dynamics, and technology, uh, Saturn and Neptune is trying to curb that, put some restrictions, some regulations on it, slow down things a bit. I hope this doesn't mean another interest rate is coming in America, another interest rate hike. But that would be one possibility, just as an example. So at this third quarter moon, we have this rather tense tr triangle, one square and two semi-squares. Now, Neptune and Mars are still conjunct, but Mars will have recently moved into Aries. So again... Whatever Mars was imagining with Neptune and earlier with Saturn, now it's kind of free to put that into action. And uh, we're all hoping that this will be good plans, good actions, rather than bad or violent actions. Uh, chances are we'll get some of both, but which will predominate, that depends upon the choices we make. Jupiter is still conjunct Uranus. It's moving on, but you can see some of these aspects are really lasting for most of this lunar month. Okay, what else? We have Mars, Neptune still making a good uh, sextal uh, to Jupiter, Uranus, but also to Pluto up here. So there's, in addition to having Chiron as an ongoing focal point, uh, point for the month. At this uh, third quarter moon, Mars Neptune is going to be a focal point. And uh, it's making a sextile to both Pluto, to both Jupiter, Uranus. And again, the question is when Mars goes into Aries, what kind of actions are we going to pursue? Will they be good plans for peace or are they going to be plans for violence? Either way, they're going to get some assist uh, from Pluto and Aquarius, which means that uh, groups with power will probably approve. And they'll get assist from Jupiter 
conjunct Uranus, so maybe uh, creative options for peace will emerge. That's what we hope for, but again, what actually happens depends upon the choices that people uh, finally decide to make. Okay, and lastly, we have Mercury conjunct Chiron. Mercury has moved direct. It's at 17 degrees Aries, so in a few days, it's going to be exactly conjunct Chiron again, and that is another aftershock from that April 8th total eclipse of the sun that the lunar month uh, begins with. So, again, wounding, healing, or transcendence. Uh, it's all our choice. We can pursue the low road or the high road. And we've got to work out ways to pursue the high road whenever there's conflict with others. Uh, the di difficulty is that you may be pursuing the high road, but your adversary may not. And, you know, that's the fly in the ointment. Everyone has to be on board. Everyone has to be convinced uh, to pursue a better path in order for there to be a lasting peace. Okay, so we just have to hope for the best and work for the best and do what we can to help heal and do what we can to eventually change the minds of those who are entrenched in war and conflict. Now, from the third quarter moon to the next new moon, uh, we don't have quite as many aspects being formed. One of the important things that happens is on May 2nd, Pluto turns retrograde. Okay. This is, you know, the leap forward in technology and particularly artificial intelligence that has just been one headline after another uh, ever since Pluto moved back into Aquarius earlier this year. But now it's like Pluto is, Pluto and Aquarius is hitting the pause button. It wants to take some time to evaluate what it's doing, uh, what is going on. Uh, in the fall, in September, for a couple of months, two and a half months, Pluto will retrograde back into Capricorn and that would be a time during which we start putting together or trying to put together some regulations to go along with all of this rapidly advancing technology but for now uh, May 2nd that's when we start to put the pause on things and start to think about where we're going Okay, on May 3rd, Mars will make a sextile with uh, uh, Pluto. Uh, action is going to be in harmony with uh, the powers that be, the groups that have powers. Hopefully this brings peace rather than making conflict easier. It makes action easier, but we need to choose good actions. On the 3rd, uh, the Sun semi-squares Neptune. That's going to add some uh, confusion to things a little bit on the 6th. That is when the semi-square of Saturn uh, with Pluto becomes exact, so uh, that can increase some intentions, or it could be restrictions being put on power one way or another. Also on the 6th, this is when Mercury will be exactly conjunct Chiron again. Once more, ongoing aftershocks. Additionally, on the 6th, we have Sun making a sextile to Saturn, and that can lead to good regulation, good control over things, as opposed to uh, frustration, uh, depression, restriction, uh, things that we feel negatively. And lastly, we get to the new moon on May 7th, which is the start of the next lunar month. At this point, we'll have Sun, Moon, Uranus, and Jupiter, all conjunct in Taurus. 
not exact at this point, but it's putting a lot of emphasis on this creativity. You could also put emphasis on revolution, rebellions around the world. Uh, Uranus always uh, breaks up the existing pattern. It's a very excited, a very hyper kind of energy. Jupiter is growth. Uh, we might see record highs in the stock market at this point. That's one possibility. Or we might see sudden falls. Sudden changes in direction usually happen under Uranus. If the market goes up really high, well, remember that what goes up must come down and vice versa. Uh, so it may be a temporary euphoria that is followed by some uh, declines. We have Saturn semi-square Pluto. It was exact, I think, the day before. Uh, we talked about uh, that and its impact. We have Mercury conjunct Chiron. It was just past exact. Again, yeah, we begin the month with Chiron. We end the month uh, with Chiron. Chiron and Aries, that is the focal point for this entire uh, lunar month. Uh, we have Saturn sextile, Sun, Moon, Uranus, and Jupiter, and Taurus. This will help... Uh, regulate uh, growth and regulation, <clears throat> make it easier to have appropriate controls on whatever is happening over here in Taurus. With all this stuff in Taurus, this usually puts a focus on the economy. Uh, Taurus is the second sign in the zodiac, has a correspondence with the second house, has to do with uh, uh, things we value, things we like. <clears throat> and enjoy and uh, things we need to uh, survive. So May may actually turn out to be a month of pleasure uh, in some respects. Uh, and let's see, what else is going on? Uh, let's see, we have uh, Pluto making a sextile uh, to Mars. That is good. Uh, hopefully it will be good. It makes an easy connection uh, between power and action. So hopefully this will result in good actions being implemented. And we have Jupiter uh, making a sextile uh, to Neptune. So this is a higher imagination. Jupiter is vision. Those things are going to work together. We may get a lot of creativity and science, uh, growth and finance and growth, creativity in all sorts of areas. So the end may be good. Now, a couple of things I don't have written down over here. I'm running out of room. Let's see. It looks like... Uh, Mercury and Chiron are still making some sextiles to plants over here. And also to Saturn, maybe very widely to Neptune over here. So Chiron is still at the center of things <clears throat> as it will be uh, through this entire month. So the entire month, There'll be a focus on the wounding that's occurring, the healing we're trying to bring about. But others, individuals here and there, they're going to be those who really feel the transcendent energy of Chiron, this call to go beyond the visible world uh, towards something more spiritual, those things we can sense but we don't see. So... If you feel that kind of nudging in your life, please focus on it. Please fan that flame, that still small voice within, and let it grow. Now, let me point out something we start to see emerging here. Uh, let's see, we already have a weak trine 
uh, looks like between Jupiter and Uranus, both making a sextile to Neptune. On uh, June 2nd, Jupiter will be making an exact trying to Pluto, and they'll both be making strong sextiles to Neptune. That is going to complete a very beneficial triangle. Some people call that a, a, a mini a grand trine. Uh, <clears throat> and long ago, uh, <clears throat> we had in a, a very powerful grand trine <clears throat> between uh, Jupiter, Pluto, and Neptune. <clears throat> Neptune being over here to complete that triangle. And let's see, the exact date on which that happened or the exact year. Um, I may have the year wrong. I think it was 1878. That may be wrong, 1878 or, yeah, I think that's right, but might be wrong, so double check it. But anyway, what was going on in the summer of that year was there was our first constitutional convention to construct and ratify the U.S. Constitution. That happened under a grand trine between Mercury, Pluto, and Neptune. And that brought a lot of power, vision, and spiritual imagination into it. Furthermore, earlier that summer, there had been an exact conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron, which brings out the really sweet, the really spiritual side of Chiron. This is why our U.S. Constitution is such an inspiring document. It still has some flaws. Wish we could get rid of the Electoral College, for example, and have a true democracy where we elect people by majority vote. Still has a few flaws, but in spite of that, it's a very spiritual, transcendent document. The energies which led to, product, to the production of that document were getting some echoes of it with this smaller, the small grand trine composed of uh, one trine and two sextiles between Jupiter, Pluto, and Neptune, and then the emphasis on Chiron in a different way with Chiron and Aries. So this makes me very optimistic. This mini grand trine, this triangle becomes very strong on June 2nd. And that might be a turning point in which we really begin to uh, save our democracy. Uh, people may return to those principles enshrined in the Constitution and uh, work together, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. We may all work to become one people again, one nation. And <clears throat> I certainly hope so. I certainly hope that's the outcome. In the fall of <clears throat> 2024, there's going to be an extended sextile between Jupiter and both <clears throat> transiting Chiron and Chiron in those July 70, 1776 charts for America. Uh, both plants will be moving slowly because of retrogrades. We get a <clears throat> sextile that lasts for a couple of months and up through the November 5th election, that is going to help bring out the sweet side of Chiron, the more spiritual side rather than the wounding side, and America will be impacted. So, starting with this uh, <clears throat> summer on June 2nd, we may discover our rediscover our democracy again. We may see more and more people turning to those uh, high principles enshrined in the U.S. Constitution and other documents like the Declaration of Independence. Now, let me mention 
uh, one other thing uh, before I move on. Let's see. Talking about Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Taurus again. This happened previously <clears throat> in 1941 uh, <clears throat> during World War I. Of course, during that period, I mentioned we had both war, rebellion, and we had technological innovation, Manhattan Project and other things. Previously, Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct in Taurus in 1858. Uh, there were a lot of skirmishes going on uh, around the world at that time. There were uh, battles and conflicts in America between evolving pro-slavery pro forces, anti-slavery forces, things which led up a few years later to the beginning of the American Civil War. There were also scientific achievements in 1858. Uh, the first transatlantic cable for telegraph was laid down, and suddenly we were able to communicate directly, almost instantaneously, with people in Europe. <clears throat> and also, Darwin presented his theory of evolution to his fellow scientists in that year. So this Jupiter conjunction with Uranus, that is also going to be very prominent this month. And it could result in either unrest, rebellion, or uh, creative scientific breakthroughs. But the really important theme this month is that Chiron in Aries which gets stimulated over and over again, is often at the center of things, still making some sextiles uh, to Saturn and Neptune and to uh, Sun, Moon, Jupiter and Uranus over here, still at the center, still conjunct Mercury. Time and time again, Chiron and Aries, which can be either wounding, healing or transcendence is stimulated. So please, Choose to heal, choose to transcend, and experience the sweet side of Chiron rather than the wounding side. <clears throat> okay. This is just a quick scan of <clears throat> aspects being formed. In April and May, the lunar month goes from the 8th to the 7th, and you can see a lot of the action here. In the month is between the 8th and the 20th of April. And then it gets a little calmer uh, for the rest of the lunar month, even though we get some important conjunctions and whatnot. And lastly, uh, this is a graph which is again showing dates of uh, and durations of some of the major aspects. These are only the planets from Mars on out, so I don't have Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus here, but uh, <clears throat> you can see on the 10th, for a few days we have uh, Mars conjunct Saturn in effect, very strong. Then let's see, we get down here, here's Jupiter conjunct Uranus, uh, which will be making an impact roughly from uh, uh, 15th of April through the uh, 26th for about 11 days there. We have Saturn making, oh, first we have Mars conjunct Neptune on the 28th, lasting for two or three days. Saturn semi-square Pluto lasting from April 24th through May 19th. So that's going to be some tension between power and regulation lasting uh, almost a month. Okay, what else do we have? When Mars is conjunct the lunar nodal axis on May 18th, that's in the next lunar month. That could increase some tensions. Uh, Jupiter 
making a sextile with Neptune. That's exact on May 23rd, my birthday. <clears throat> making an impact from May 18th through the 28th for about 10 days. This can bring in a more uh, peaceful energy, vision and imagination combine to work together. So, you know, sing the song Age of Aquarius, uh, dream dreams, have visions at this time. And at the end, we have uh, of May, next lunar month, though, May 29th, that is when Mars is conjunct Chiron, and I hope that leads to spiritual warriors who work for a higher purpose uh, rather than <clears throat> just more wound, aggressive wounding of people. You know, lots of possibilities. We never know which possibility will manifest because this is all just a weather report. Uh, what we do with the weather, that is our choice. It's our choice regarding how we respond. We just know when certain storms are approaching, when the skies will be clear. And we try and give people some good choices they might make in response. Okay, well, that's it for the lunar month. So let me stop sharing my screen here. So just give me a minute or two. <clears throat> okay, and I'm back. <clears throat> My voice is going more sympathy. So, <clears throat> like I said, this is going to be a very impactful very pivotal month. A lot of the focus is going to be on Chiron and Aries. We begin the lunar month with a bang, with a very powerful uh, total eclipse of the sun, that solar eclipse with sun, moon, and Chiron exactly conjunct. That's going to affect a lot of countries and a lot of people. <clears throat> and that's what I'll talk about in my follow-up video on the lunar month for countries and people. It'll impact America, the Middle East, Putin and Russia, uh, Prince Charles, uh, Princess Kate, uh, the UK. Uh, it'll impact uh, uh, Pope Francis. And I'll talk about all of that uh, in my follow-up video on countries and people. But in general, for everyone, a lot of important uh, changes in energy, uh, you know, fuel being added to this technical revolution we're uh, on the verge of now. But with Chiron and Aries, please try and be aware of the spiritual side of Chiron. Try and be aware of the healing side of Chiron and try and align yourself with that rather than the wounding aspect of Chiron. So please open yourself up to these higher spiritual energies because they are so, so sweet, so, so transcendent, and so, so beautiful. So if we all make these good choices, all will be well. And so until again, I'll just say so long, make good choices, and be well. Be kind to yourself and to others.